What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Man Reacts. Let's get straight into it. Another female girl boss CEO puts entire company at risk. As I always talk about the demonization of, you know, women who choose to stay at home. There is nothing wrong with being a stay at home mom. We love them around here. It's other women that demonize this behavior, not men. Demonization of housewives, the demonization of women who make a different choice than what is considered the acceptable choice of the modern feminist movement. You know, and not every woman is going to want to be that CEO or enter the workforce. Some of them want to devote themselves to being a wife yes. and being a mom. Yes. Why do we have to disparage them? Mm -hmm. Because they're making a different choice than what a lot of women make in this day and age. Why? Why? Why can't because we misery loves company and these women are out there working really hard. These feminist independent boss babes are out there working really hard just to live a normal life. And they realize that paying for everything is played out. But the thing is, they can't go find a man because they do not qualify for these men. So therefore, they want you to be alone as well. Remember, misery always loves company. Just fight that reflex because we all have it right. I mean, Rolo Tomasi says we're all kind of raised in the feminist age and hence we kind of have a little bit of that lens mm -hmm. i believe that he's right on that in many respects because i even have to check myself sometimes because it's almost like you're programmed to react a certain way and it just co starts coming out of your mouth and you're like wait no that doesn't make any sense you really have to kind of deprogram all of that stuff and look at stuff for what it actually is we live in a world where women are demonized and targeted for wanting to be housewives and raise their families mm -hmm. instead the media and popular culture will have you believe that being at home in comfort, raising children, caring for their families, and being okay with the husband leading the family is oppression. Facts. But then we have girl boss women CEOs who are ruining companies. An iconic American eatery stock has plummeted in recent weeks after the company's CEO said the restaurant is no longer relevant. Brutal. Cracker Barrel, the southern Bro, I like Cracker Barrel themed restaurant with 662 locations across Damn. the nation has been diminishing in popularity over the past decade mm. with its loyal clientele of elderly people failing to return after the pandemic the yeah. business tanked even more when its chief executive julie fels messino told investors we're just not as relevant as we once were since the call the 54 year old company's shares fell by nearly 20 percent on thursday cracker barrel traded as low as 45 dollars 35 cents a 52-week low that marked its lowest level in over a decade. Brutal. Here's an anecdote of a person from Canada who saw how women in the corporate world ruin companies from within. My last corporate job had a woman GM. She was given the job to fill the female leader illusion, which is a must in Canada. Hmm. Meanwhile, all the men in the background were keeping the company running. She just took the credit. She was an arrogant, backstabbing feminist bully who wore a t-shirt and tight jeans in a business attire environment. Her bad decisions and leadership took her two years to run the company into the ground. She was also under investigation by the National HR Department because her pattern showed she got off on firing men for little things to soothe her ego. Wow. She ended up jumping ship and moved back to the US, never to be seen again. The damage she caused wasn't repairable and the company doesn't exist today. Wow. Here's an example of a construction company ruined by another female. I worked for a company like this. It was a construction company. The owner retired and gave it to his gay daughter to run. <laughs> she hired a lesbian woman with a gay son and put him in charge as well. <laughs> Just like she hired a, a gay daughter to run. She hired a lesbian woman with a gay son. What's next? He had a, a tr like Leah Thomas is running this from NCAA. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought it was just going to keep getting weirder. <laughs> and then his trans non-binary cousin came in and did, did the sales team. <laughs> they started hiring all of their friends and people aligned with DEI. They created an HR office run by an autistic feminist woman. Ooh. Soon everything came to a halt. Suppliers pulled out because they were not paid on time. Architects did not answer RFIs because no one at the office could understand. Prints were outdated and never updated. Clients started noticing the lack of manpower and adherence to scheduling. The normal people left very fast, and the ones staying were too young, too gay, <laughs> too many women without experience, and also a bunch of token races unable to do the work. They are now facing major lawsuits and liquidation damages, as well as lawsuits for defamation for each one of us who left and had our names tarnished. Never give in, fight back, and do not help this person. Damn. Here's a story from a guy who witnessed an unqualified woman taking over a job he was better suited for. A few years ago, a former colleague of mine asked for my resume because the company he was at needed someone with my skills and experience. And he, knowing what I could do, 
recommended me. A few months passed by, and I thought someone better might have taken the place. He eventually called me and apologized for not getting me that job. I told him not to worry since these things happen, but out of curiosity, I asked him who did they picked. He said they gave the job to a young woman. When I asked about her skill, he said that she had none. The boss picked her up because she had big hooters. I didn't bother to ask how things were at the business, since the stress in his voice was answered enough. Wow. Modern woman and like a lot of the feminist indoctrination brainwashing and American women with these like massive insecurity things. She's just saying like, well, I don't, I don't want men to be the leader. That's, that's basically what she's saying. She's like, I don't want men to be the leader. I don't like women can be leader too. Not even women can be leaders too, but she's saying like women can be better leaders in certain situations. Companies are now really because men built the modern world that we live in. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we have today came from the ideation of a man. Literally everything, the phone, lights, houses, like Name five female inventors. Don't worry, I'll wait. What, what's the first one? Um, Madame Curie or something like that? I can't remember her name. But like, ladies just don't do that. Ladies are more invested into the social structure of society. That's why they're more in the social work. Like, nurses, social workers, hairstylists, sci sci um, psychiatrists, therapists. They're more involved in people, whereas men, we are more invested in things. That's why we dominate STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. 80% of that workforce is dominated by men. It's only 20% of the women that dominate that force, that workforce. So men built the modern world that we live in. It's okay. We're different. And like women are really good at certain things, and so are men. And I think the problem is, is that women are trying to become men. And especially in the dating world, women are trying to become the men that they've always wanted to date. I'll say it again for the ones in the back. Women are turning in and trying to turn into the men that they've always wanted to date. But they're doing that, and then they're also trying to do it in other aspects. They're, all, they're trying to do it for the men that they work for, too, saying, I could be a better leader. Well, it's like, maybe you could be, but the thing is, it needs to be equal because you guys wanted equality. It shouldn't be um, that we have to do, um, what is it, inclusion and diversity hires. It should be who has the highest competency and who is the best fit for the job. If it's a guy every time, it's a guy every time. It is what it is. The thing is, there's a lot of fields that are not dominated by women where if women are good at it, they can soar. Sales is one of those fields. Right, running companies, being CEOs is one of those fields. Most of the time, men just do a better job. If a woman's a better fit, I think she should get the job, but I think she has to compete with men and it has to be fair. If she's not a good fit for the job, then she shouldn't get the job. The fact that we're including these women, uh, there was a video we did the other day of like a, a female pilot. She was flying and then like wrecked the pilot, like tried to take a turn going like 70 miles an hour and wrecked the, wrecked the, uh, wrecked the, uh, the plane. We shouldn't be trying to get inclusion and diversity in this. We should go for the most competent who has the highest skill set. That's who we should go for. Competency over inclusivity. You know what I'm saying? Regretting promoting women to leadership positions because they had to fill gender quotas. See that too, gender quotas? Like, God, that's so stupid. Board of directors happy. What else can you expect besides absolute incompetence from such a person? Another has an associate's degree in graphic design and heads the program analysis division. What happened to employing people based on qualifications? Facts. The sad part is that these incompetent women are usually the ones who make the workplace miserable. Mm -hmm. Went out of his way to make the workforce within that company 50-50 as much as he could in terms of men and women being represented. So we're talking about engineers, we're talking about tradespeople, we're talking about in workshops, which we're talking at, at the managerial level. If you, if you hire 50% women engineers and 50% male engineers, then the women engineers are less qualified because the pool of engineers is lower among women. So you can't hire 50% women engineers without producing a decrement in the quality of the engineers because the, this, this selection pool. JP's over here preaching. He, I mean, he's right, though. It's a smaller pool of women. Therefore, the competency level's not going to be to the same level. They're not going to have the same acumen that the women would have that aren't in that. Like there's way more male architects and engineers than there are female architects and engineers. So, you know, the fact that you would try to make that Another fair is absolutely robot. egregious to me. Like, why are we looking for fairness? We should go for competency, not fair. Who cares what's fair? Life isn't fair. Because no one at the office Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, Prints were outdated. And sorry here. Let's go back. Let's go back. For our female engineers, and you insist upon hiring be able to do that in one company. But look, you think about it mathematically a decrement in the quality of the engineers. Go. 
because the, the selection pool is too, is too small. You can't do that on a large scale. You might be able to do that in one company. But look, you think about it mathematically. If there's 10 times as many male engineers as there are female engineers, and you insist upon hiring 50-50, then obviously the degree to which the female engineers are proficient cannot be the same as the degree to which the male engineers are proficient. It's mathematically impossible. So you're saying don't even try? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying something much more specific than that. Here's food for thought laws, policies, regulations, and all those other driving factors that push for hiring quotas for women in those leadership positions are now null and void. If someone pushes back on that, ask them to define what a woman is and watch them fall apart. <laughs> At the time, a hired- Let me know in the comments, what is a woman? <laughs> what is a woman? Let me know in the comments. Your decision is being made and someone's told they have to hire a woman to fill quotas. Simply state, I identify as a woman and that makes that issue disappear. That means businesses can just hire who's best for that position, and quotas are no longer an issue. That's not well, a bad idea. Going up for a job. Can you imagine you're going up for a promotion, it's you and this other girl? <laughs> and they're like, well, we're really looking for, you know, an inclusion hire here. Really looking for a woman, if we could. And then you could just be like, well, I identify as a woman. Levi, stop. No, I identify as a woman. And if you do not address me as a woman, you're a bigot. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, okay, well... Please just don't go to HR, and then you get the job. <laughs> and then the, the week after, like, I identify as a man. That would be hilarious. Quotas are When a woman says that you're controlling, toxic, insecure for not wanting your girl to go party four or five nights a week and get drunk and put herself in these sorts of situations, that's basically essentially just shaming language. You're trying to shame men out of using our masculine instincts mm -hmm. to keep her out of positions that put the relationship at risk. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no reason that a man should allow his girlfriend to put the relationship at risk. And I do think it's the case that if you're going out and partying and getting drunk and being around these kinds of people in these kinds of environments, you are putting your relationship at risk. We'd love to see- well, like, like I've said, dude, in previous episodes, what's more secure and what's more insecure? Is it more secure to set a boundary with the woman in the risk of losing her? Or is it more insecure to not set a boundary and let her do whatever she wants? Let me know in the comments, which one's more secure? Setting a boundary and risking losing this chick or just saying, baby, go out there and do hot girl summer. She belongs to the street. Go out there and let all these guys hit on you. You know what? To Miami, let me buy the tickets. You want your girlfriends to come? Let me buy their tickets too. And let me get you guys a nice hotel right on the strip. Come on, baby. Stupid. Stop, dude. Come on. Whole companies where 50% or more of the employees are men and all the men do the bare minimum work, the same as women. And when the companies try to retaliate, threaten to wage a lawsuit with all the men and the people waging it for gender discrimination. The reality is Stupid. that you can't please those who can't be pleased, Bash. no matter how much effort you invest. Mm -hmm. This phrase reflects the idea that some individuals or situations are inherently difficult to satisfy or appease. They say, if you want work to get done, you hire men. If you want headaches, you hire women. <laughs> In my experience, women have always brought nothing but drama and gossip to the workplace. When a boss tells a male employee to do something, he does it. When a boss tells a female employee to do something, she argues with him and needs to make her opinion known. Don't you love how women... Well, it's, it's the difference between men and women. This is a big one I've noticed is like when you give a woman constructive criticism, she takes it personally. When you give a man constructive criticism... He just pertains it to the job that you're giving him the criticism for. You know, for example, if there's two student athletes, right? And they go, hey, John, when you are running, you're not lifting your knee high up enough and you're not pushing your momentum for, far enough forward. A guy would go, absolutely. What should I do to fix that? He'd be like, lift your knee up more. And when you're pushing, push more off your, push more off your back foot. I'm giving an example. This is probably a horrible example because I don't run. I'm not like a, a big athlete. Give it to a girl and say, hey, Patricia, you're not. And I always go with that name, Patricia. Hey, Patricia, you're not lifting your knee up and you're not pushing off your back foot more. Well, it's just because these shoes and, and it's, it's not something I'm doing. Like they would take it personally, whereas a guy would say, hey, what should I do to make this a little bit better? Right. It's, just, it's as simple as that. Like women, accountability for most of these women are, is like the plague. It's, you know, it's like kryptonite. They're like, they take it so personal. But as men, we can separate like, oh, you're not dogging me as a person. You're not trying to hate on me for who I am. You're just hating on a certain attribute that's pertaining to the activity that we're doing. Women can't make that separation. And so they take everything personally and they get mad about it. Um, this is why in the workforce, sometimes they're not the best fit for certain jobs. Like sales is really tough for women because there's a lot of rejection and you take it personally. 
I never take anything personally. Apparently do everything a man can do, but at the same time need gender quotas to help them do what men do without help. Gender quotas and diversity hiring should be made illegal. Yes. It is pure discrimination. The only parameter that counts is how talented and skilled a person is. Facts. How good his or her portfolio is. Mm -hmm. How much experience does that person have? The fact is, the most dangerous people in Ooh, an office goodness room gracious. right now are young women. If they decide they don't like your face, you're out. And sometimes they just don't like your face because you don't like theirs, or refuse to submit to them, or to do extra chores for them. Let me ask you guys, have you guys ever had a girl, uh, girl boss? I've had like a couple girl bosses, but they were like just lower level managers. I've never had like, oh, the, the head of the company is a woman. But the girl bosses I've had were kind of like that. And even even one of them was a lesbian and she was she was kind of like a dude. But at the same time, she was still really catty and like played favorites. And it, it was it was weird. I think I think just as men innately, we understand rejection a lot more. So therefore, when we meet a guy, we're like very open to to help them feel welcomed. Whereas a woman, they're not used to rejection. So they just are very open with rejecting people. I could be wrong, though. Let me know what you think. But I think it's because men, we understand it a lot better. We've been getting rejected since we were kids. We understand it. They're like, stop crying. You're a boy. Girls reject you all the time while you're growing up. And then when you get older, you're like, hey, I understand. That's why that's why when two guys meet, they can usually become friends really quickly. But when two girls meet, they're like, hmm. I don't really like her. Like she's got this and that us men. We accept each other because we know how hard life is. We know how much we've been rejected. Therefore we're more open to just be willing to hear each other out. That's why it's like, and I don't know, but I don't know if you guys noticed this in like high school, but like I had the same group of friends the entire time through high school. There were girls in high school that had a new best friend every week. <laughs> they had a new best friend every week. It's like, well, I like Catherine this week, and next week I like so Callie, and this week I like, mm. Like, they would always, like, pick new friends. Well, she's doing this, and I don't really like her now, and we're, we're best friends now. Like, girls were so fake with their relationships, whereas guys were like, I got my writers, and I've, I've known them guys since I was, like, 14 or 15, and they're still some of my best friends today. You ask a lot of the girls, their friends, like, their friends from high school, they're not friends with those girls anymore. Even the college friends, sometimes they're not even friends with those girls anymore. So it's like, it's absolutely wild to me that, like, the difference in loyalty, but it, once again, men understand rejection and women do not. It doesn't matter. If they are half as skilled the as... The ultimate you, Sigma Alpha male, Christian Bale from American Psycho. Great movie if you've never seen it. ...you or half your age, HR and management will always play along, like in a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Just stay away from women in the office completely. It's the only way to be sure to keep your job. I mean, that's true. I avoid them like the plague. I only talk to them if I have to. And even then, every new girl they hire is another person who can get you fired at any time. Mm -hmm. If you look at the backgrounds of some of these women, you'd shake your head too. Imagine someone with a political science degree and experience as a paralegal and swim coach being the head of the budget management division. Women are also fixated on socializing at the office and making sure that everyone is involved, even if they don't want to and even if they're not the type of people who would prioritize socializing over work. This socializing stuff is really an issue with female co-workers. It seems to be the main focus at work, and everything else has to take a back seat. And they get highly irritated if you show no interest in socializing with them, in what they have to say, and complain about a lack of empathy if you show no care for whatever stuff they complain about. Imagine sitting in your office and getting called by human resources. You put that file down, get up, and go sit down with the HR manager who tells you that there's been a complaint against you by your female coworker. Bro, this happens all the time in corporate America and it's always the women complaining about it. And then there's a mass email sent out that's talking about guys got to make sure that when we're out on these, we're keeping appropriate. Be, be, be. It's crazy to me, dude. It's such a one way street with this, but these, these female girl bosses are, are crushing the crushing the the modern industry of working it's crazy to me that's why it's like girl bosses i just don't think women are meant to be girl bosses like i think women are built to be wives and mothers and that's like where they thrive instinctually biologically and i think men thrive off providing protecting and being that masculine figure i think men thrive in their most masculine and i think women thrive in their most feminine Call me crazy. I don't know. What do you guys think? Would you agree? I just, I don't know. I, th I think we're so different that we need to remember that we're different. And I feel like today's a day and age, everybody wants to be so equal. And there's this weird amalgamation of wanting to be each other and men wanting to be women and women wanting to be men. Where it's like, let's just go back to us being each other and help each other out. We're better together and together we're better. Together everyone achieves more, right? It takes a village to raise a child. That's why we need to bring back the nuclear family. We need to live closer to our families if we can. Like, I don't know about you guys, but... Most of my like 
most of my generation, they've moved away from home. The boomers kind of stayed in the area they were born, but then millennials have really moved away from where they were born, and Gen Zs are even worse. They're like all over the world. And so we're breaking up the nuclear family. We're breaking up this, this foundation of what it means to have heritage, what it means to have culture in a family, and it's just been lost. COVID really hurt it a ton, but it's crazy, man. Times have changed, and I'm, I'm, very, I'm very weary of what's going to happen in the next five to 10 years because it seems like we're just getting further and further apart, and there's more disdain between men and women when there should be more of a cohesiveness that we're trying to embody in modern culture and, and just society in general. We work well together. We've done it for thousands of years. Let's get back to that. You know what I'm saying? Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys, man. Mad love. Peace.